For most cadet candidates, arriving on R-Day is a very nerve-wracking experience. This will be the beginning of their transition to military life. However, for a few, this is just another experience in their military lifestyle. These cadet candidates have prior service and are usually quite a bit older than their peers and definitely have more experience. The purpose of this documentary is to determine how their prior service may have affected their experiences at West Point. How nervous were you to arrive at West Point on our day? Uh, I didn't say I was nervous at all. Um, I was injured at the time, so I, I guess you could say I was, uh, I was a little bit concerned that I might just get kicked out on that day, but I wasn't nervous about any of the, the Army things. I was um, fully prepared to be annoyed for uh, six weeks, is that how long Beast is? Mm -hmm. um, and then have that be over with and, you know, just go to school. I was nervous, but in a different way than I was nervous for basic training. I was just nervous because it was a new place. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I wasn't afraid like I was when I was going into the Army's basic training. Uh, what were your attitudes after being like yelled at by a cadre member that was probably younger than you? I just turned my brain off. Uh, I don't really like getting yelled at by people who are younger than me and know less than me. Um, I just took it because I was kind of used to being yelled at from basic training and also from like other NCOs. At first I had a very poor attitude. Um, then after a few days, I just recognized that it was part of the Army game. And really, they didn't know what they were doing a lot of the times. So they just acted like how they thought they should act instead of acting in a manner that was conducive to leading. Uh, how did you feel about calling cadets by enlisted and officer ranks? Um, it, was definitely, it was definitely unexpected when I got to prep school. I didn't know that was a... Uh, the thing here, but uh, it didn't really bother me after I gave it some thought because I understand like what they're trying to do and they're, what they're trying to teach to people and uh, this place isn't catered towards me so I understood it. It's a little weird at first. You see these little lines and you know it's a sir, it's a ma'am, it's a sergeant um, but it's not it's not a big deal. You, you know that you have to do it so you just you do it and you move on. It's not really something that bothers you. That bothered me. Um, personally, I, I think it's weird, but I'm part of the experience, uh, especially since all cadet ranks are just cadet is the actual rank. So, um, I didn't have an issue with it. I went to prep school beforehand. Um, the army pays you to be in a position, and the position I took was a plebe, so that's my job to basically call them by those names and ranks. And that's what West Point puts out as his rules, and I'm just paid to be here. So, it was definitely a little funny because. Um, they're not sergeants, they're not corporals, they're not lieutenants, they're not captains. Whatever their rank may be, they're not actually that rank, they're just cadets. So at first I definitely had a little bit of animosity towards most of the cadets because I felt like they were entitled. However, since I've been at West Point for a while, I've just learned to accept it and move on and not think about it too much. What was your job in the Army and how does it compare to your role at West Point? I was a radio operator with the 173rd out of Grafenberg, Germany. Um, my unit is on constant rotations all throughout Europe, so I have a lot of, not like combat experience, but training experience. I know a lot about getting prepped for the field, going to the field, and training other armies. I've trained with the Ukraine Army, the Latvian Army, the Polish Army, um, and the Estonian Army. I was a 25 Bravo, which is an information technology specialist. Specifically, I set up command post nodes, or CPNs, and provided internet services to battalion or larger sized elements. I was also a team leader in the Army, but it's much different having legitimate privates versus a cadet private, because cadet privates don't get into that much trouble, whereas real privates, just some of them tend to screw up in ways that you cannot imagine.
So when I was enlisted, I actually wasn't part of the big army. I had the privilege of going to 3rd Special Forces Group straight out of AIT, so I didn't actually experience what most enlisted experience in the army. I was on what we called big boy rules. By the time I was a specialist, I lived off post in my own house. I was basically left my own devices. Work call was 9 o'clock. I was done work by maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I was just given the responsibility based on how mature I was. I was an infantryman, so our, our task was, I mean, it was purely to fight. Um, we, weren't, we weren't trained to, I wasn't originally trained like in any specific capacity to lead, um, especially large groups of people, and I didn't need to know a lot of, a lot of different, I guess, officer, uh, officership things, and we, our standards of conduct were a little bit looser. So getting here, having, having to train other things, other things other than fighting, and to learn stuff that isn't specifically for, um, or that to learn to learn things that is for officers and not enlisted, uh, especially conduct, a little bit different. How does the honor code at West Point relate to anything in the big army? Uh, I, I would say in the in the in the big A army. Uh, no, not that I that, that I know of. I wasn't I wasn't exactly um, part of the 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 army at large. Um, in my specific unit, we had we, we had a we had a standard somewhat like that, um, but it was it was more of an old rule that just uh, you may have heard of this Robert Rogers standing orders: uh -huh. don't lie to an officer or a fellow ranger. So um, that was uh, I guess that rule existed, but you know. There was, there was certainly nothing like the, the punishment that you face. So, I mean, for all intents purposes, no. Like, I've never seen Evan or encountered anything like the, the honor code. Honestly, you're not supposed to lie to your stealing the army anyway, but it happens. Uh, the honor code itself here is really strict, and compared to the big army, I wouldn't say it's similar. Um, I've seen officers here, officers in the big army, uh, enlisted, lie before their soldiers, and Basically, that rule where there's no lying allowed or it's extreme repercussions kind of only exists here because after here, people just continue to lie anyway. The only honor code that I can really think of in the Army is the kind of, there's sections under the UCMJ where it says uh, you cannot lie to a superior non-commissioned officer and you cannot lie to a superior officer. And the punishments for those if you're enlisted are generally in Article 15, so non-judicial punishment. So it can be a relatively minor like punishment, or it could be a relatively major punishment. Depends on what, at what level the Article 15 is administered. But that's kind of, I wouldn't say rare, but it's not common to get Article 15s for those two offenses. However, everybody at West Point knows somebody that's been affected by the honor code. And it's interesting because the West Point Honor Code is more strict in a way, but the punishments aren't as bad.